This year's Paris-Roubaix was another wild one, and the tech was hot, with everything from massive tyres to supermassive chain rings, and even 3D bar tape. Let's start with those tyres because all the riders seem to be jumping on this one, and it's official. If it worked well for someone last year, then you should just copy their homework. Van der Poel arrived in the velodrome last year on 32mm tubeless tyres, and pretty much everyone decided that it was a very good idea. We saw countless 32mm tyres from a variety of brands. Movistar, FDJ, UAE and Ineos were all on Continental's GP5000 STR tyres. Alpecin, DSM, EF, Arkea, Visma, and some others were on Vittoria's Corsa Pro tyres with a smattering of riders on the slightly grippier control version, presumably to help them deal with wet sections of cobbles. Schwab was represented by Canyon SRAM, and Michelin was one of the only brands providing tubular tyres to its cofferdist team. Tire pressures at this race are incredibly important. You need to balance comfort over the cobbles with grip and speed. We don't usually know what pressure the riders use, but footage from the start of the race showed men's winner Mathieu van der Poel using 3.46 bar or 52 psi in his 32mm Vittoria Corsa Pro tubeless tyres. For a rider that is listed as weighing 75 kilos on pro cycling stats, that is a seriously low pressure, which you might think heightens his chances of puncturing. But for the last two years, van der Poel has come through the puncture fest with zero flats. And this is crucial information if you are also 75 kilos and you need to get from Paris to Roubaix in record time. A quick word on hookless. Now, despite the noise surrounding hookless safety concerns in the Pro Peloton, we saw plenty of teams lining up on hookless rims. At last year's race, we saw several dismounted tubeless tyres, though they were on a mix of hooked and hookless rims. Several of these dismounted tyres were spotted in the aftermath of crashes, but it wasn't clear whether or not they were the cause. But tyres dismounting in crashes is not exclusively an issue for hookless rims. I've crashed when my tubular tyres rolled off its rim in a cyclocross race and a clincher tyre with an inner tube also won't remain securely attached in the event of a puncture. In this year's race, we saw nothing comparable to 2023. Both the men's and women's races were relatively free of crashes and dismounted tyres, but we'd love for the industry to push further on hookless safety. This might make your knees hurt, but Ben Turner of Ineos had a 60-tooth chainring fitted and his teammate Josh Tarling rocked up to the start line with a 62-tooth whopper. Now, before you think that that's fine, they've got an inner ring to fall back on, no. The young Brits were rocking a 1x setup with an 11-34 to tooth cassette out back. Theirs weren't the only dinner plates in the race though. Lily Williams of the Human Powered Health team had a double SRAM setup with a 54 tooth outer ring. But they were the outliers on their respective group sets. The majority of Shimano riders, unlike Tarling, went for a 2x setup with a 54 or 56 tooth outer and a 46 or 48 tooth inner ring. SRAM riders seemed ever more content with a 1x setup and we saw a mix of 54 and 52 tooth chain rings on show. While Roubaix is thought of as a flat race, it packs some serious elevation, climbing 1,414 metres over the 260 kilometre route. So why do riders want bigger gears for this race? Well, it's the sheer speed and chaos of the race which leads to riders chasing across gaps, attacking in crosswinds, and generally riding quite fast. But would you run such a big chain ring? My knees just ache thinking about it. Given the brutal cobblestones, you might expect Paris-Roubaix to be a slower race, but in recent years, the average speeds have been incredible, with 2024's men's race averaging just over 47 kilometers per hour. With the semi-muddy conditions this year, both the men's and women's pelotons exercised a little bit of caution, but aero once again played a major role in bike and clothing choices. The key indicator for me were the specialized sponsored athletes. The American brand has a bike specifically named after this very race, so we usually see their sponsored riders swinging a leg over the S-Works Roubaix. SD Works, though, were all on the Tarmac SL8, as were the Sudal Quickstep team. 
Some riders did opt for their brand's endurance bike. Elisa Balsamo was probably the highest placed rider I saw on one using Trek's Domane and Mariana Voss used Cervelo's Soloist. But the men's peloton was awash with aero frames. The podium featured two Canyon Aeros and Mads Pedersen's Trek Madone. The aero touches didn't stop with the bikes. Lotta Kopecky went all in with a full white world champ skin suit and nearly everyone was wearing aero socks. It was Van der Poel who came out as the winner on the sock game too though as he wore custom world champ Zwift aero socks. You know you've made it when you've got a pair of those. Riders will only go so far though. Handlebars are a key component for comfort and many riders chose to switch from their one-piece aero cockpits to take advantage of a round bar. These quite simply can be comfier over the cobblestones or offer a rider a more secure hold of the bar than they get on bare carbon. We saw a plethora of Roval Rapide cockpits gone from the front ends of various Tarmac SL8s with the teams fitting round bars from the likes of Pro and Specialized. Casper Askreen even shunned carbon using an aluminium shallow drop bar from 2014. There's just one slight problem with those fancy aero bikes. They don't sometimes offer much clearance around bigger 30 and 32 mm tires that you need for this race. And that was going to be an issue this year. Israel Premier Tech was one team that left their Factor Ostro Van road bikes at home in favour of the Factor Ostro Gravel. That took tyre clearance up from 32mm to a whopping 45mm, ensuring the wheels kept turning over the sometimes muddy cobbles. But it wasn't the only reason. Gary Blem, the team's equipment manager, told us that they did a lot of testing on the cobbles after opening weekend, and apparently the overwhelming consensus from the riders was that the gravel bike would be the best choice for Roubaix. He says that the gravel bike has a longer wheelbase so it tracks slower, giving the riders more time to react, but surely a gravel bike would be slower. Well, we have to remember that this is an aero gravel bike, so Factor says there isn't too much of a compromise on aerodynamics, and feedback from the riders was that they would opt for comfort over aero anyway. In the end, the choice had no impact on the men's race, with the team's riders soon distanced under the pressure applied by Van der Poel's team. And bikes weren't the only gravel thing we saw. Casper Askreen was rocking a Roval Terra CLX rear wheel, Quite why, I'm not 100% sure, but I bet it has something to do with the larger inner rim width on the gravel wheel. It's been a fair few years since we saw cyclocross bikes and gravel bikes used for Paris-Roubaix, and I have to say I'm loving seeing them again because let's be real, if we want to ride over the cobbles, a gravel bike is what we'd take. It is common to see double wrapped bars at Paris-Roubaix with some riders preferring their bar tape to be just a little bit thicker than usual. But I don't think we've seen this before. Last year's winner Alison Jackson had some properly grippy looking pro logo bar tape at the front of her Cannondale Super 6. It's their One Touch 3D tape which was launched just before the women's race started and yes I'm absolutely getting a roll of this in for tech of the month because it's a long time since we've seen any innovation in the bar tape department. But for those that didn't have 3D bar tape there's always a classic solution of a double layer of tape. Okay, so you can have all of the fancy aero frames and special tyres that you like. Sometimes the old ways are just the best. No race is quite like Roubaix for stem notes. Some riders like Voss hand wrote their notes, while other teams got nicely colour-coded spreadsheets with little emojis. Which method works best is up for debate, but the fact is that you'll need a pretty long stem to fit all of those notes on. Voss, for example, nearly ran out of room. Roubaix also places demands on literally anything that has the potential to rattle loose. Lotta Kopecky even had to tighten her bars on the move after they slipped after an early cobble sector. Most riders will try to limit the chance of computers flying off. Now this Cofidis rider used some kind of fluffy tape. This EF rider though kept it simple with what looks like carpet tape and if all else fails a little dongle will at least keep a computer kind of dangling from the bars. 
Stefan Kung, meanwhile, he didn't want the charging port door coming open on his Garmin. If in doubt, just tape it shut. The Decathlon AG2R team was one of many using grip tape on the inside of their bottle cages. Pfeiffer Georgie, though, her lovely Scott foil was finished with a good old pair of metal elite bottle cages that can be bent in to hold the bottles securely. But it didn't work for everyone. Bottles were still flying everywhere and Sam Wellsford took to Twitter to ask for his hammerhead back. If you see it, let him know. Well, that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour. My highlight was definitely the wider tyres. I think you and I can use that on our bikes at home because we might not be racing over the cobblestones, but I don't know about you. My local roads are not in much better condition. And if I can be fast and comfortable, I'll take it. If you want to see our video where we tested the fastest road bike tyres, then why not just click up there? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.